Hey, what's going on guys? Go Mikey KNC here. In this video, we're going to be implementing pseudo random number generator. And let me explain the reason for doing this first. So if we have a look at this how it works section within the Magic Bitwords article on the chess program in Wikipedia, uh, and the step number two in particular, we have this, uh, we need to multiply the key by a magic number, so called to obtain an index mapping. And the magic number can be generated by brute force, trial and error. So in order to actually be, be able to generate these magic numbers by brute force tri trial and error method, uh, we need this pseudo-random uh, number generator. And the idea is to have uh, pseudo-random numbers uh, being generated in, in, a, in an absolutely the same way regardless of operating, operating system and uh, processor architecture. So eventually we will have uh, so if you if you compile the source code uh, of the chess engine where develop we're developing within this series uh, you will you would get absolutely the same magic numbers uh, regardless of what kind of computer you're supposed to be compiling it on so bearing this stuff in mind uh, let's actually go for our implementation so first let me just try to get rid of this code from the previous part and also I want to open the terminal in the current working directory and by typing by typing make debug and if it compiles I want to run the BBC binary executable here. Okay. And the algorithm that we're supposed to be using in order to implement our uh, uh, implement our pseudo random number generator is known as X or X or shift. Uh, X or shift and we would be generating 32-bit numbers and later on converting them to unsigned loan on 64-bit numbers But the very initial state and the pseudo random number generator itself actually is is not yet the same uh, uh, Random random number generator that we, we would be using in order to generate random numbers to try them as potential magic numbers so j just to bear the difference in mind anyway the very first thing i would like to consider we need to define the pseudo random uh, pseudo random number state first and this would be the unsigned integer and let's call this state and here is a trick uh, uh, I want to mention one uh, one more time so I've been testing uh, so my, my current implementation of uh, magic number generator uh, relies on the random function available uh, on POSIX like operating systems but obviously it can't get compiled on Windows and let me just show you this uh, like sh show you this error first so if we just include uh, stdleap.h and here uh, I would just try to print uh, long, uh, long decimal specifier followed by the new line and call the random function here so it fails to compile uh, it fails to cross compile by mean gv G G G gw GCC compiler because it says like implicit decla declaration of random so it simply doesn't have that so in order to actually compile and run this I need to make uh, a Linux version only here so I can say GCC BBC C minus O BBC and if it runs if it compiles I want to run the BBC executable and here is the initial state initial constant uh, n n well not a constant but well, or we can call this constant, uh, but it's not a constant type uh, from the C program la language perspective. So if we start generating our pseudo random numbers from this number in particular, so if I can say like this, uh, save, then mm, I just uh, I will know for sure that. Uh, we will 100% will generate uh, the working uh, magic numbers for our magic bit boards because of the because this is the exact number uh, my magic number generator uh, kick starts with when initially calls the random function that doesn't work on Windows obviously so uh, the what we're supposed to be doing now is actually 
creating a custom random function that would be cross-platform but we'll call this uh, a little bit different so if you're still on Linux like uh, like me so there won't be any conflicts with the uh, uh, function names like that so uh, I don't uh, I don't need this anymore uh, or maybe just let's just command this out better uh, and I know I don't also need this system standard li library header anymore and here we want to um, actually generate 32-bit pseudo uh, legal numbers and let's call this function unsigned so they all are unsigned that's quite pretty important uh, for this algorithm so and unsigned int and let's call this get a random number uh, okay and um, here we need to get current state so we create uh, unsigned integer let's call it just x or we call this can call it number this doesn't matter this doesn't matter really and it would be equal to state like this now we go for what is known as x or shift algorithm you can reference this on on wikipedia just uh google for x or shift 32 x or shift like one word algorithm uh, algorithm and we need simply to say like number uh, x scored with number left shifted to 13 bits and then number x scored with number right shifted to 17 bits and finally number uh, left shifted with five uh, with five bits and now we need to update a uh, random uh, number state so we can say state equals to number and here we return random number And we can uh, we can return either number or state doesn't really matter that much they are literally the same uh, but the idea is uh, that every time we would be calling this function this uh, random number would be changing so let's just return the number here and now okay let's make sure that it's still compiles and runs and also for Windows as well perfect so now it now we can run this on Windows as well, which is really great. So um, let's actually go for some tests. And uh, here we'll, we already have this unsigned decimal. It's not uh, an uh, it's not long anymore, but probably they both generate the 32 bits at least in my uh, on my architecture in particular. So let's get a random number here. Sorry. Okay, and let's go for it. Okay, so the first number goes, and now let's try to do this a couple more times. So I just need to make sure that the number gets different every time, and it is basically. So this is the very initial step uh, for randomizing bits. For a potent to create a potential candidate to uh, to serve uh, as a magic number that would be tested later on within the routine, uh, actually testing these magic numbers to make sure that they work. But uh, without this function, we can't really go th th there far. And one very important thing at the very end, guys, make sure that uh, if you would be following this tutorial if you would be trying this at home on your local machine regardless of operating system or processor architecture you have to get exactly the same numbers like uh, I see here on my screen so if for some reason you would be getting different numbers please make sure to 
uh, leave a commentary below this video pointing out uh, to that issue because that's th th this is absolutely essential stuff here I even though if your different numbers would work uh, uh, I still uh, need to know if if you get different results I personally I've been checking this uh, I've been checking this the following way and probably uh, I can even demonstrate you this so if we just uh, I think it would be literally enough just to grab this code and go to uh, I'll go to my Python anywhere account to make use of uh, let's go to files and here random.c uh, I've been already testing my uh, magic number generator here to make sure that uh, absolutely the same numbers are generating uh, are generated on uh, this remote Amazon web server so, but now I just want to show you this either so obviously we don't have this function okay and so get random number so in theory yeah, it should get compiled well at least I hope so well the only thing we need is actually to include the stdio.h okay and if I just now open the console Mm, it should be getting absolutely the same numbers so okay random is right over in here so just try to compile it via gcc random.c minus o random and if it compiles i want to run this random here so yeah it seems like absolutely the same numbers so let's compare so one seven four one eight one seven four one eight nine six three nine six three oh eight okay three two one well if, if the first is the same all the other should be the same obviously yeah so it seems like it's working quite pretty nicely well, okay guys so this is kind of almost it and i just want to emphasize one little thing that you already might be wondering about like why the hell Kodemakakin is using global variables all along the way and just uh, just to make sure <laughs> ju ju just to satisfy you a little bit regarding this point uh, I want to make you sure uh, uh, <laughs> oh my god <laughs> how to say this uh, I just want to say that uh, I'm aware of uh, what the structs in C programming la language are and how to make use of them and uh, uh, I've even been playing around with creating class-like structures with uh, pointers to functions to, to literally to mimic uh, op uh, object-oriented approach within uh, C programming language with, which doesn't really have classes and things like that so uh, I understand the object-oriented pro oriented programming at at the at the low level basically the only thing where i didn't really try object or to mimic the object oriented approach is probably the assembly language but that's not a big deal to implement as well so uh, as far as uh, if you understand like how this uh, how the pointers works basically that's that's it you just need to understand how the pointers works but uh, as as i've been already mentioning on talk chess forum uh, uh, and I, I was going even to record a separate video on this, but probably I'll just say this now because like nobody really cares about this, I guess, in in in, in general. So um, when I was uh, initially following the Blue Fever software's Jazz Engine in C series, and by the way, uh, I'm really proud to finally know the name of Blue Fever so software. His name actually is Richard uh, Richard Albert. And I had a very nice conversation with him on Talk Chess recently. And, mm, but that's not the point actually. So uh, he was making, mm, he, uh, he was using uh, structs, and uh, to be exact, he was using type def structs. So he was, uh, gener he was creating new data types using the type def keyword. And then he was creating the instance of that structure uh and passing the pointer to the structure all along the way with the functions 
actually dealing with the data being encapsulated within those structures. And for me, uh, a guy who had no idea regarding this low-level C language related stuff at that time, it was incredibly difficult to actually follow that approach. And I was so uh, I really wanted to concentrate on the chess programming techniques instead of uh, C programming language best practices. So obviously, uh, you are absolutely free to encapsulate all the global variables with the structures and then initialize them and just pass the uh, arguments uh, to the functions dealing with those encapsulated data. So you're absolutely free uh, of doing uh, free to do this, free of doing this. But the reason why, again, like why I don't really want to do this in this series is because I want you guys to focus on chess programming techniques in general and bitboard uh, related techniques in particular because bitboards are not really that trivial themselves and it's really nice to have mm, a clear understanding like uh, like didactic understanding of how bitboards work and I just really want to focus on that as much as I can and that's the exact reason why I'm using uh, the, uh, all these global variables along the way so just in order to avoid you guys getting distracted by uh, by this uh, C programming related techniques obviously I understand that those of you who actually uh, following the B Bitboard chess engine series probably already experts in C programming language but if it happens that there would be some guys like like me uh, back in those days who kind of were who were really eager to uh, learn about chess programming but don't don't have exactly C programming language skills like say guys c coming from JavaScript or, or from Python guys who has no idea regarding this arrays pointers and all this low level uh, memory address and stuff just just for those guys uh, I'm creating this uh, global variables so it would be like something they have already familiar with so uh, I really hope that you mm, accept my approach here uh, because mm, it's not just uh, it's it's not just the matter of decision I wasn't thinking about so it really t took me quite a bit of time to uh, c to come up with this sort of a decision and again like I see a, a huge sense behind uh, this way of doing things so I really hope you understand my approach and again like if you uh, get an annoyed by this please just encapsulate this whatever variables you want with the structures and go your own way uh, anyway it it's it won't affect uh, either the speed of engine overall or you know like anything else so you can still follow this tutorial so you are absolutely free to use whatever practices you want actually so this is it from my side guys thanks for watching i really appreciate uh, the fact you're following this series and the interest to this series is really growing at least according to the topic on talk chess forum i've created uh, a few days ago so really lots of replies there already uh, i'm really uh, i'm really happy to to see this and uh, I'm really happy that the interest around this project is actually growing and only thanks thankfully to uh, your support guys uh, I'm getting motivated to keep go keep my work going on and on every day so uh, I'm really grateful uh, to all of you guys for this and really appreciate this so hope to see you next video until until that time and take care